Okay, and welcome. And today we're going to talk about Bob Dylan Rough and Rowdy Ways. Um, my review of the concert in Liverpool on the 3rd of November um, at the MS Bank in Rena. A part of his Rough and Rowdy Ways tour, which he's been going on, I think, now for like three years. The album came out in 2020 and then the tour started in 2021. It's now the end, near enough, of 2024. This is the UK leg of the tour. Now, I've done some research before I went to the concert. I mean, I watched some of the shows on YouTube. I know there was a phone band, but there's always ways around these kind of things. And uh, I watched some of the, the footage of it. And I, I was quite enjoy it. I, I like the album anyway, so I, I thought to myself, you know, it's a good chance for me to see Bob Dylan. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm not a hardcore fan, but I know, you know, more than an average fan. And I thought to myself, well, well, I'll go to this. This would be great. The tickets cost me £85. Then I think it was like £16 booking, booking fee. So I decided to go. The thing is, you, when you got the email with the ticket, you had to pr you wouldn't get in the venue unless you had to pr print out the ticket before you go. Um, which was ticket quarter, I think, that sells the tickets. And then I was quite lucky. When I turned up to the venue with my printed out ticket, they let me through a little bit quicker because I bought the ticket from the venue, Ticket Quarter, instead of buying it from Ticketmaster or on some other site. So I got very through quicker, which is quite good. Then all they do is like ask if you've got a phone. And because I could have said no, but being honest, I said, yes, I have a phone. And uh, you put your phone in this pouch, people lock it give you the, the pouch back, then it's there, so you just put it in your pocket, then your phone's locked, you can't open it, you know what I mean? You need to break into it, but... I'm there for the music, I'm here to see Bob Dylan, I don't care about taking pictures, because you're not, if you're not allowed to do something, you're not allowed to do it, and I, I respect the, the, the wishes of the artist, I suppose. However, some fans were criticised by the low visibility of the 83-year-old legend during his rough and rowdy ways tours gig at the m and Bank Arena, and opinions were a wee bit divided. While some spectators were in awe of the icon, which is me, who bought them a few classics like Along the Watchtower, which opened the show, and my personal highlight, which was Desolation Row, others were left bitterly disappointed at feeling the concert failed to meet to their high expectations. Let me stop that there for a minute. Um, now, if you go to a Bob Dylan concert, you know what you're getting into. You know what I mean? If you're... Even a, a Bob Average fan, you know that Bob is, is, isn't going to play all the hits, you know what I mean? He's, he's just got to do what he wants because he's a, a true artist and that's why I respect him. And um, he just been in the business that long and just does what the hell he likes. If he wants to change the arrangement of his songs, and I, I, I quite like that because I think it's refreshing instead of just hearing all but the hits. Some hits would have been nice, of course, but we'll get to that later. An emotional fan posted that attending the event, Bob Dylan in Liverpool was amazing and beautiful. Why am I in my hotel room crying and seeing an 83-year-old man play a harmonica? God damn. I'm telling you what, when he did play the harm, when he started playing the harmonica in certain songs, um, <laughs> you got a big cheer. Every time he played the harmonica, people started to cheer. My seats, where I was sitting, the visibility of the stage was no great. You could see the guitar player, you could see a bit of the drummer, and I, I, I could see the bass player kind of standing just behind me, just a little bit. I wear glasses, so I had to like take off my glasses. I could see, you know, you, you, know, you take off your glasses, you bend, you can get a tiny bit of a look because you're not short sighted, you're long sighted, whatever it is. And, well, obviously, I've seen some concerts on YouTube and that, so I had the two. Look, lights focusing on the musicians and Bob's on his, you know, his piano and all that, you know, I mean, he's like old frail and, and he's, some of the songs went on for like fucking um, eight or nine minutes or whatever and then suddenly they'd be like a, you could play an ebb talk, a surrender and it's going to all end, you know, and the guitar player was pretty good. Um, I thought Bob was in fine fettle, I suppose, I think he was in, in good fettle, um, Fans of the legendary Bob Dylan were left with mixed feelings after the gigs venting their frustrations and experience online. One attendee wrote, A lot of sublime moments were wrecked for me, pinpointing the restless crowd 
constantly talking and making noise with their food and beer before expressing their more intimate settings in Wolverhampton. Criticism didn't stop there, as others took issue with the inadequate lighting at the venue, stating that four merely birds could hardly be seen. Displeasure uh, poured out on social media, media too, with one fan addressing Bob Dylan on Twitter saying, Why no lighting in Liverpool? Most disappointing gig in more than 50 years. Came to see the legendary Bob Dylan, but never really got to saw him. Um, so another one replied, didn't go to see him, went to hear him. While one bewildered concert goer noted, it was so dark, I thought they were putting a spotlight on him or something, could barely see him. The phone lock controversy added an extra la layer of discontent. Um, for me, that didn't really bother me, you know what I mean? It was a more enjoyable experience because you weren't really allowed to use your phone. And I thought that was really uh, good. At first I thought, oh no, I, I, I want to take pictures, I want, you know what I mean? But then I thought to myself, I didn't really miss it. You know, you know when you're allowed not to do something, they, you just accept it. And I actually enjoyed the experience more because I, I actually enjoyed the music and the people, well that guy on Twitter or whatever saying that um, people are making noise and that. They always get the hardcore fans that, you know, think they own the, the artists and they're not, they're kind of, a wee bit snotty to the casual fan or the, the fan it's maybe no like as hardcore as them who have seen them like 30, 40 times in smaller venues they, they kind of want the artist to themselves and for me music's for everyone and everyone should be allowed to see Bob Dylan you know what I mean um, what were they talking about? Yeah, so that kind of thing when I was sitting the people around me were really respectful the bunch of people I was with never really said anything. They just sat there peacefully and listened to the music and when the music was over it left. The highlight for the concert for me was a Desolation Row. I mean, it was really, really good. And it started off brilliant and the band are really tight. You know, I mean we've been 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 on tour for like four years, they are going to be really good and Bob was in fine fettle. For the last song I walked down the side of the arena, so I thought this is the last song. I knew that I did my research anyway, so I knew this could be the last song. So I thought, I'll go to the side of the stage and I walked down. I just stood there, and hopefully no one was noticed me. And the security people never said anything, so I got to see the last song really well. And then Bob like kind of walked off the stage, and you know I got to see a really good close up of him. So that to me that was the highlight for me at the end. I got to actually see him like wow, that's really him there. Wow. <laughs> it was, you know, because it's the last song anyway, I've been doing anything harm, I just wanted to get a wee bit closer, you know what I mean, and it's the last song, you know, if you pay £100 for a ticket, you know, it's the last song, I mean, let people enjoy themselves, as long as they're not, like, um, being be, being too outrageous. I noticed I read online that some guy had, kind of, on the floor, kind of walked up and shouted something, but he got removed, but I, I kind of remember uh, seeing that. Let's talk about merchandise. I mean, the music was fantastic. We were there for the music, but I do like a bit of merchandise. I bought a T-shirt inside the venue. The the T-shirts were like forty-five pound. I think it was a bag or something. I think it was like forty-five pound, fifty pound or something. Then I never bought a T-shirt inside the venue. There were people selling outside, and of course, people take cards nowadays because I I didn't really carry cash a lot these days. So I did buy, managed to buy a nice T-shirt. Rough and Rowdy Ways, UK Tour 2024. Um, that was a lot cheaper outside. <laughs> Buy a t shirt outside. I you know. Forget the official merchandise unless you're a millionaire. You know what I mean? But I did. The only thing I bought inside the venue was uh, Bob Dylan four badge, four badges, Rough and, rough and Rowdy Ways, four badges, and they're quite nice. They come in a little bag thing. So I like that kind of stuff. So I'll keep that there as a little memento. Um, and I still have my ticket actually that I printed off so I'll keep that and I put that in a little bag I'm quite sad that way so Bob Dylan rough and round the ways Liverpool absolutely fantastic I mean there's going to be disgruntled people who you know the lighting the phone controversy blah 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 it is a big venue I think it was over 8,000 people there for me it was 9 out of 10 fantastic if you get a chance um, 
the other shows on the, the tour are, well, tonight's in Edinburgh, then 6th is Edinburgh again, then they move on on the 8th of November to Northampton, then Wolverhampton two nights, 9th and 10th of November, 12th, 13th, 14th of November is in London at the Royal Albert Hall. The day started off for me, I went to see a, um, a tribute to Bob Dylan called Simply Dylan, which was fantastic, and a place called The Three Graces Pubs. So I went to see that first. Then I left there and I went to see a guy called Clark Gilmore who played in the cavern and he was playing all the all the sixties, you know, tracks of Blonde on Blonde and um, Bring On Home and all that kind of stuff. So th he played all the classic um, Bob Dylan hits where so we, we went <laughs> two tributes, then the real thing. So it was like a, a real traditional um, Bob Dylan day. I mean I'd go again, I thought it was, I thought it was really mesmerising. Um, Bob's voice was quite good, you know what I mean? Because I had stories about people like walking out and stuff. I did notice a, a couple of people behind me, they left after um, about half an hour, but that's only two people last seen leave the show. But uh, I still had to quite pinch myself, actually, because you think, you know, when, when I got to the venue, like, like everything went very smoothly with the phone, looking up your phone and all that and, and didn't have a problem getting in the venue. Um, all right, the food and, and all that's expensive, but you, you are going to spend a wee bit extra when you're at a concert. But these are experiences and memories if you're a music fan that will last you forever. And um, to me, that is priceless. Anyway, thanks for listening. And uh, I, don't, I don't really know what my next gig's going to be. Um, well, hopefully it'll be Paul McCartney. I'm still trying to negotiate that one. Um, thanks for listening, and um, I'll see you next time. Enjoy the uh, rough and rowdy ways. Fantastic. Take care. Bye-bye.